Hi, I'm Justin Reed. I'm the CEO of Troilus Gold. We are a TSX listed, uh, TLG is the ticker, uh, gold developer focused on the Troilus Gold asset in Northern Quebec. We have an 8.1 million ounce equivalent resource right now, about $350 million US of inherited and upgraded infrastructure, and we are actively uh, moving it towards production. Hey, Justin, good to speak to you. Um, we didn't speak that long ago, but a press release came out last week, which was a little bit further to our conversations previously. You're drilling, you're finding uh, higher grades. Um, well, let's start with last week's press release, because I, I do want to get in and talk to you about how this project moves forward. I think there's some frustration in the marketplace uh, generally around precious metals. I think there's some frustration about which companies and which companies will be able to move forward. And I want to go there with you, but let's 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 kick off with last week's press release. What we, we'll be trying to tell the market there? Well, we 22 months ago we discovered uh, the Southwest Zone. Right, and it was a, it was a pretty big game changer for us. Um, two and a half kilometers south of the main mine. Um, Brand new discovery, one month of drilling, 8,000 meters to find 600,000 ounces, threw it into the PEA, which was over a year ago, which was a great start. Um, we have since drilled um, probably about another 45,000 meters there, and it just kept growing. And, and we've been putting out lots of press releases. Last week uh, was a major step out of about 650 meters, and the significance of this is, is pretty simple. It's now 1.8 kilometers long of mineralization. It's all going to feed into a pit. It's about 450 meters wide. And to put that into perspective for you, that has a, a spatial footprint larger than our Z87 deposit where 2 million ounces was produced. Um, we have three drills on it. We are infilling it so we can not give you an inferred resource. We can give you a reserve it'll feed into our pre-feasibility next year. You know, intersections of 19, 20 meters of, of 1.2 grams and higher grades. And so what we're seeing as we move Southwest, that in general, the thicknesses are great, it's shallow and the grades are higher. All of that economically fun, funnels into a better deposit. Um, and we can, we can talk about the impact of that, but, now three drills are 12,000 meters a month, all focused on the Southwest to get it ready to not be the first six months of production, to be the first five to six years of production. And that's going to have big impact. Okay, so here's the thing. The, the, the kind of conversations we're having in the marketplace, of course, everyone's frustrated. You're, you're frustrated about what's happened in the precious metal uh, market um, this year, but moving into next year. You know, we're, we're trying to hone in on companies with strong fundamentals. And you guys keep talking this language. It's this like science fair language of we're doing X, we're doing Y. We don't translate it for retail family offices into, well, that means this much more uh, incremental metal in the ground, this sort of economics. This is when we're going to get into production. This is when you can start seeing ret returns on all of this investment. Otherwise, just keeps sounding like a, a massive drill fest and it kind of loses its sheen after a while. Do you know what I mean? Well, well, sure. I mean, drill results aren't even regarded in the market really anymore. It's just, a, it's more of a, a flag to say, hey, we're spending money appropriately or hope to be spending it appropriately, right? Um, just to put in perspective though for you, a Cisco at Malartic drilled one and a half million meters over seven years to get to the, to one of the greatest mines in Canada, right? And, and the story is very similar to what Troilus is. We're 200,000 meters in, in two and a half years. So we're going very fast. I understand the impatience in the market. We're, this, we're impatient as well, but we're, we're running a business. But it's about really laying out this roadmap to production, right? And the things that, you know, technically the market doesn't see because we're not putting out a press release, we're permitting at the federal level already, right? And so the definitions, the EIA is underway, all of this non-sexy, boring bureaucracy is already happening. And so when we turn around and say, listen, we can be in production in three and a half to four years on the outside, working within this framework, you want to hear that if you're a long-term fundamental investor. And then the Southwest, yeah, is it a drill fest? For sure it is. Um, it's very exciting. We didn't need more ounces. You've said that before. We've needed... We had an okay asset when we got it. Um, we've drilled 
over the last few years, plus 150,000 meters, we made it a good asset. Now the Southwest is taking it to the next level. Why? Add surface, no strip. Those other pits are great. We've talked about them. They're economic. They're going to give you 20 years plus of mine. But you got to push back those pits. That's bigger capex, right? Uh, more sustaining capital. These are add surface. We have to move five meters of till, and you're on top of the ore body. Strip ratio is going to be lower. That means your OPEX cost is going to be lower. And most likely, you're going to see the grade go higher. And the the sensitivity at Troilus as a low grade bulk tonnage deposit to a 0.1 gram move is huge. So if we can come out at 1.1, 1.2, 1 gram versus 0 0.7, 0 0.8, the impact is massive to MPV, to IRR, and ultimately to cash flow early on in the life. And as well, if you don't have to do the big pushbacks and you don't have to move waste piles like we do to the north at the main mine, um, capital is going to be maintained as well. And so Troilus is absolutely setting up to be a very, very robust near-term developer, right? The things we're doing now are about generating cash in a very short window of time, not about giving you 25 million ounces in a hundred year mine life 10 years from now. So everything's being focused very, very concisely on delivering a project quickly. What, what, what does quickly mean? You, you reference a Cisco and you talk about seven years, you talk about every million meters of drilling and stuff. You're earlier in that stage. Are you are you drawing parallels to Cisco? One, because I guess the success story, but because you are going to do it the same way that they did, or are you looking to advance, or when you talk about near term, are you looking to advance the production capability? Uh, uh, profile of the company by producing earlier than a Cisco did. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to understand why you mentioned well, that. We, we, one, we're not going to come out at the scale of a Cisco, right? Which is 50, 55,000 tons a day. That's huge. Um, they had a very different market at that time as well. I'm going to say a better market actually. And, and Sean and John and Brian and, and Bob, you know, they're also unbelievably, they were a great team. And our team, I think is just as good. Um, We've inherited a lot that they didn't have, right? I don't have to move a town, which was unbelievable that they did it. Uh, I don't have to move a town. Um, we have a lot of inherited infrastructure, which was ready, which gave us, I use the analogy, we're halfway around the racetrack before we're starting. So we have a bit of an unfair advantage. And so for us, it's permitting, 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 and great ounces. Southwest delivers the great ounces. Richard Harrison and Ian Pritchard, our engineering team, delivers the unbelievable, you know, the project. Jack and LaRue and Daniel Bergeron uh, uh, deliver the permit and call it the social license. And Blake Highlands and the team, well, they just add ounces as much as we need. We've changed our mindset over the last five months to move away from this broad-based let's see how big this is, to now our geological team works. Blake and Richard basically focus together and their discussions are, what do we have to deliver to you, Richard, to make this the best project tomorrow? And so, yeah, we have regional exploration. We'll do, we'll do another talk about that sometime, but, but it's all about great ounces now. And, and this press release, Maybe they didn't quite come out, but really says, listen, here are your great ounces, right? Well, that's the interesting bit here, which I think was missing from the press release, because it just looks like another press release like from any company here. You're talking about the, moving from like one gram to 1.1, having a massive financial impact or 1.1 to 1.2, massive. And I just don't think that's kind of communicated to certainly the retail audience. The fun guys can maybe work it out, right? They can do their yeah. modeling and they can work it out. And, it's, and I, that's what I'd like to see more from you. And also trying to get an idea of when you when you were talking to your team and saying, hey, how can I get you the grades that you need to make this a great project tomorrow? What does that actually convert into in terms of timing? Because right now you look quite good. You've got 50, 55 million bucks in the bank. You're doing some drilling. It's all easy breezy, but you're not, you're not burning through cash. It's nice. But at the point where you start to need to go back out to market and raise more 
capital for you know in terms of operationally whether it be cap capex etc it's that's that's when the rubber hits the road as far as investors are concerned because you're you know you're much obviously much further along the line but it also gives us a sense of who's willing to back what you're telling us so can how, what's that roadmap look like you're absolutely right right because we can burn 55 million in a drill and at the end of next year come back and say oh let's just keep going the next race has to be fundamentally different the use of proceeds have to be fundamentally different. It's not about preparing for a, a feasibility, feasibility be done. It'll be about long lead time items. It'll be about um, early infrastructure upgrades that we can do ahead of the final permit. And it'll be about what can we do to expedite delivery of your first dollar to you, right? And so from that standpoint, um, we had a really great site trip uh, not too long ago, uh, last week, with you know two of our three biggest shareholders, which is the Quebec government, and we've talked about it in the past. And it was very refreshing because you know we talk about catalysts, near-term catalysts, mid-term catalysts. What is the pre-feasibility look like? How big is that resource going to go from 8.1 to whatever um, at the pre-feasibility? When we take our Quebec-based shareholders to site, it's about, okay, good plan, like how you've refocused. Capital requirements to build this mine are 18 months out. Got it, what are you gonna deliver us in 18 months? Let's get working on that now, because we don't wanna have any delays in your capital allocation going to, you know, going to production or going to construction. Oh, what are you going to need to drill that out? Okay, let's start doing that now. So all, all the focus has not been about, let's give the market 10 million ounces. I'm sure we'll give the market something near that uh, in our next resource. I'm not, you know, we've, we went from 5.1 to 6.4 to 8.1 in three years. No problem. Expect that growth to continue. But what you want to hear is, okay, Where's that first five years of production coming from Southwest? And what's the grade of that going to be? If it's 0 0.7, 0 0.8, that's fine. If it's a gram, way better. And I can't give you the sensitivities now, but what I can say is we bought back our royalty for, for 20 million bucks, two and a half percent in November of last year. At 1475 gold and $3 copper, we're at 18 and 450. That was 125 million US accretive to our PEA model, which really didn't include the Southwest, right? That's, so you can start thinking about what a 0.1 or a 10% increase in grade can do when you buy back a 2.5% royalty. So um, the math isn't that hard to do. It has massive impact though. And more, more so the impact is on payback and return of capital. I'm excited about the change in attitude you guys had from five months ago, from when I first started speaking to you over a year ago, right? I think it's a big move, but I'm even more excited having done a panel of which you were, uh, you know, you were one of the panelists and also a, 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 a banker. And I asked the question, because I'm not sure, every, I'm not going to say everyone's seen this, but 15,000 people have, but I'm not sure everyone saw this. But I asked a simple question was, do companies in Quebec have an unfair advantage? And the banker within one minute said, yes, they do. And it's because of the people you just took to site, it seems to me, because I I stop, um, I usually stop listening to companies when there's a lot of promotional BS. When you are talking about taking big shareholders of yours up to site, and they're talking about the next 12, 24 months, that feels more real to me. And I guess that's what I wanted to hear from you today, which I, you know, we, we've talked about a lot of topics, but. That's a kind of moment for me where you've got certainty of refunding in the future, it feels to me, about the CapEx component. And you've talked today to me about getting to a point where you've got better grades, better margins, and getting into production a lot quicker. That, that, so I think that I've got a lot out of today. But what would, what, would you, what would you say the kind of long poles in the tent are for me from stopping you from doing the things that you've told me about today? I honestly don't see anything stopping us. I say you're going to hit hurdles, and this is mining. Right, we're going to have lots of hurdles. We're in an inflationary environment, right? Steel's more expensive, concrete's expensive, costs ramped up because of the COVID cycle. We're starting to see them taper off a bit, but all capex is going up, right? You look at what 
happening at Cote and Hard Rock and Magino and all of the big builds in Canada right now, all the capital and in, capital intensity is increasing, but gold's a lot higher than we're all modeling too. So I'm actually think all the returns for these projects are going to be better than we thought. Um, for, for us, I think that it's really about keeping your financiers and I'm talking debt financiers working on project debt now at the pre-feasibility level in the tent the whole way, right? You don't want to bring them in in two years from now and say, here we are, can I have, you know, X hundred million dollars, please. It's about keeping your, I'm going to call them all part of your team in the tent right now so that as you evolve and your model evolves up and down, they're aware of all the changes so that the due diligence and the education is done when you need the money, not starting when you need the money. And Quebec provides Pascal and Jose and myself all the ability to do that. And so, you know, my colleagues on the panel, we're all, we're all kind of doing the same thing very differently. Um, but I, I say we're all approaching it the same way because we've been given this roadmap by the government that says, we're here to help you, you know, and those two assets as well are kind of the chosen assets in Quebec. And, uh, yeah, we've all got a, a good shot here. Um, other than that, you know, we, we have a lot of flexibility at Troilus because we have this copper silver component that we never talk about, right? At $3 copper, 15% of our revenue, almost 20% of our revenue in certain years is copper. Copper is now a strategic metal for Quebec and Canada. Um, I like that one, it's incredibly valuable, but two, it gives me a ton of flexibility and leverage as a, as a developer that I haven't had before, right? I want to keep the precious metals. I'm a gold producer, completely unencumbered. So that means that by buying back that royalty earlier, I can pre-sale the copper. We can hedge the copper. We can use various derivatives with the copper, which ultimately says we're going to limit, limit that dilution that our shareholders, to our shareholders by using a non-core component of our production profile um, to help fund the, mo the, mo the mine. And it, it's this financial flexibility, which is really interesting that we haven't spoken about before. And um, you know, ultimately if copper goes to $5 and gold goes to 1200, which I don't think it'll happen, then we're, we're Troilus Copper now. So we'll have to change our name. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, time, interesting times. Hey, so tell me, so tell me this, because I'm, I'm sort of bouncing around with speaking to lots of um, brokers and banks and and and, and group, interested groups. In what's happening, what's happened with the gold market this year? Um, in you know, I think the general feeling is it's a sort of it's a nice sort of cleanser in a way. It, it's cleaning out some of the promote which happened last year for some for some of the companies that perhaps don't have what they are telling the market, but. Their focus next year is on gold stocks, right? They will be pushing gold stocks because they think that it, it will it will come back. Um, people will get interested again. You know, obviously the economy is a big part of that, but also the fact that it's people have been looking elsewhere and hoping for the best and not necessarily finding it. So, it, it you, how, how do you, in that context, play the market? You come on, you're you're an ex um, finance guy. You know what's um, coming. How do you set yourself up? apart from all of the other people who are going to be clamoring for attention? I think you have to pick your horses first, right? And then, and so kind of take a step back, forget about the hype, and look at fundamentally based stories, which depending on what your criteria is, right? Jurisdiction, team, asset-based, time to cash flow. Um, if you're a high-grade story uh, that's drilling aggressively, drill results can still matter, but you really have to be careful of valuation right? Because they can get ahead of themselves sometimes. So you have to be nimble, I guess. Um, as an investor, for, for, for us, it's, you know, we just went through a period of tax law. We diluted our shareholders this year. I'm not going, I'm, you know, we raised $55 million. It was well-priced, incredibly well-timed, but the gold market came off right after it. Stock did poorly as the whole sector did. And, you know, in Canada or in North America right now, you have tax law selling. Well, if you were really watching your horses, you could have bought Troilus 30% lower three weeks ago. Um, so I think it's just really about 
picking what exposure you want in the in the precious metal space. Do you want a producer and cash flow? I don't know. They're pretty well priced right now, um, and we're seeing consolidation occur. Uh, I think on the developer side, balance sheets are strong. Debt is low. Kirkland Lake, Ignico is merged. We saw Fiore yesterday. These we're seeing groups come together now, which is great. Once that integration is done, it's okay. Our cash flow, uh, the new Kirkland Lake Nico is going to have $2.6 billion in liquidity and growing, um, but they're not exploring. So where are you going to buy your growth, right? And in, right now, the developer space is probably the best way to add ounces and near-term ounces, I think. So that's where I'm playing, but I'm talking my own book. <laughs> Hey, well, like, Justin, um, just one last thing. So we between not much time for Christmas. I mean, what, what are we looking forward to from you guys in terms of further announcements before the end of the year and maybe into next? Yeah, I mean, you're going to see more from the Southwest, which I, I'm just going to say it's more of the same. And we're expect and we're, we're excited about it because that's value. Um, you're going to see we have been spending money and we have great teams recently on some new targets away from the mine. Very small capital being allocated there. But it's interesting. You'll see that from us. And uh, you'll see some technical developments as well, which are all about focused production. And so that, that's probably the most exciting thing to see from us. Met work, permitting updates, kind of delivering that plan. Brilliant. Okay. Well, look, we'll stay in touch. Um, and uh, if there's any news, give us a call, okay? Awesome. Thanks, Matt.